What's up guys, welcome to the next episode of the Crack of Packs series. Today we're opening up a pack of Apocalypse with a very special guest, Will. Hey. Guys, Will's you here remember for the Crack me? of Pack. Yeah. I think this is the first time I've ever been on the Crack of Pack. It is. It definitely is. 100. I've only ever had one other person, but we don't speak of her anymore. <laughs> Gay ass. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm stoked to have Will here. We're going to go through this. <laughs> made you laugh uh we're gonna go through this as always as this is if this is a pack one pick one scenario uh we'll do our best to try and figure out what our uh first round pick Ooh, will be I i'm just, excited i got you pretty hard uh yeah i like that they can't see what's going on behind the scenes um i doubled over in laughter it was delightful uh so <laughs> sitting at the top of the value list here we have phyrexian arena sitting at 13 dollars uh 13 is not a lot so uh no, that's basically not crazy. the best thing we could get uh pernicious deed is at six as well as shivan reef all the pain lands will be great um and then vindicate is actually at five dollars as well yeah so we have to do what is it one two three four yes got it look at that uh okay. oh man first card Urborg Uprising, four and a black for a sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, and you draw a card. Uh, this was reprinted fairly recently. I believe. I don't remember what set, though. Uh, it was like a master set or something, but it's actually not terrible. No, I'm fine with that. Like, it's a good card. Uh, it's not first pickable, though. No, definitely not. Uh, but not bad. Definitely pretty good. Uh, Gaia Skyfolk, 2-2 two, two for a green and a blue. It has flying. Uh, it's an elf and a merfolk. I didn't yes. know that that crossed over. Nor did I. That's really um, sweet. I have not opened any of Apocalypse, ever. I've opened like three packs, so <laughs> we're doing great. Um, um, I like that card, though. I think that card is honestly a little push for a 2-2. Yeah, honestly, it's like difficult to cast-ish, but like other than that, it's pretty good. 2-2 two, yeah. two for 2 with flying? That's solid. Yeah, that seems fine in draft. I, uh, like, that. I like that more than Orb Herb Orc. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we have a foil. That's a random place for a foil. Uh, mind Extraction. Two and a black for a sorcery. Mm -hmm. As an additional cost to play it, you sacrifice a creature, and target player reveals his or her hand and discards all cards of each of the sacrificed creature's colors from it. Ooh. That's an interesting card. Um, that is interesting. I don't know if that's actually good, though, because by turn three or four-ish when you would play this, like they're probably going to be low on cards in their hands so it might be just like a one for one yeah i mean and and it's actually a two for one against you because mm -hmm. you sacked a creature and used a card definitely depending on the colors too though yeah so that's fair. i mean if if you're playing like i don't know grix's mirror or something like that yeah maybe you know? it's worth it but i don't know it's don't like know. sideboard at best though definitely. right because there's no way you main deck that it definitely spoiled, that's pretty cool yeah uh, strength of Night, two and a green for an instant with kicker of one black. Uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one till end of turn. If you pay the kicker cost, zombies you control get an additional plus two, plus two. Hmm. Uh, green, black, zombies. Interesting. Huh. That's like a really good buff for zombies, actually. Yeah, that's solid. Uh, again, not like first pickable, though. I feel like I'd have to be in zombies for this to be good. One hundred percent. Like. Yeah. I, I like it, though. It's yeah. kind of a sweet card. Definitely. Oh, well, there we Ooh, go. That's yeah. a good one. This is a really good one. Do you want to read it? Sure. Go for it. Quicksilver Dagger. So it's an enchantment for one colorless, one blue, one red. It says, enchanted creature has tap. This creature deals one damage to target player. You draw a card. Uh, So normally, I hate enchanted creatures. This is an exception. Yes. Uh, uh, agreed. This really good. <laughs> yeah, you ping something and draw a card. Yeah, that's awesome. It immediately replaces itself, right? Like that's the idea, mm -hmm. and that's why I feel like this is good because normally, sure. and we've talked about this before. Well, like you open yourself up for a two for one very yep. easily with enchanted creatures. The fact that this replaces itself makes that more okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, if that makes sense. Plus, it just deals damage. Definitely like, that's good. This I believe was in a return to Ravnica. Uh, uh, precon deck. I think it was the. Was is it really? It? Yeah. No way. Yeah, I didn't know that. I think it was an is it precon. Well, it's a great card, so I'm stoked to see that. Uh, that so far is the pick, I would assume. It wasn't in. To clarify, it wasn't in Return to Ravnica's right. set. It was like right, the right. Mid Mizzet theme yeah, yeah. deck. Uh, okay, manacles. Am I saying that right? Of decay. Yeah. Uh, enchanted creature, one in a white. Uh, the enchanted creature can't attack. Uh, for one black, enchanted creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, and one red, it can't block this turn. Interesting. Uh, yeah, this is like an interesting take on pacifism. Yeah, I, I like pacifism more. 
But... Yeah, I do too. It's kind of simpler, like which is oh, yeah. good in this case. Um, <laughs> I do like that it can't. I mean, it, it's pseudo removal and technically removal if you want to pay more black. Yeah, um, but technically, like, it it requires a lot, right? It like, does. I do think this is playable though, and mm -hmm. without like the third color, if that makes sense. Like you could be sure. in black white or red white, and this will be playable no matter what. I'd agree. Uh, but I think I still like the the dagger more for sure. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, Nira Disciple, one black for a one one. Uh, you can pay green and tap it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool, or you can pay one white and tap it and prevent the next one damage that will be dealt to target creature or player this turn. I do not like this card. I do not either. Uh, this is, like, real bad, I feel yeah. like. It's a mana dork that doesn't actually net you more mana. Yeah, so. like, that's garbage. You don't want that. Nope. Uh, Reef Shaman, a merfolk for one blue. It's a 0-2, and you can tap it. Target lands uh, type becomes the basic land type of your choice until end of turn. Again, not very exciting. No, because, I mean, the the draw here for Eternal Formats is keep everything the island walk, but we all know the better way to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. no. This is not it. Right. Uh, so, right. not a fan of that card. No. I think in Limited, that might be fine if that card is drafted in this set. I don't Maybe? think it is. Uh, No, it's not. Spreading Seas? Yeah. No, it's not. Um. But, I mean, like... Unless something else has Island Walk, then... Yeah, it's just... It doesn't seem... It's a yeah. lot of work for not a very good thing. Uh, right. Lanoir Dead is a 2-2 two -two for a black and a green, and you can tap it to add black to your mana pool. I do like this card. Yeah, I actually like that. This is fine. That's uh, solid. Obviously, if you haven't picked up on this, this is a multicolor format. Uh, and so... <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, black Green Elves being actually very good, from mm -hmm. my recollection, at least, of this set. So I do like yep. that card. Not more than the dagger, but still quite good. No, I think when Black Green Elves is in, there's generally some cool stuff that goes along yeah. with it, right? 100%. Like, Shaman of the Pact and Origins is, yeah. like, sweet. Yeah. And it's in Modern now, by the way. Um, black Green Elves. Huh. Ah. Uh, Coalition Honor Guard. This was also reprinted somewhat recently. Do you want to read it? Sorry, sure. I keep, like, reading no, you're fine. Things. I'm just reading it because I don't remember this card. Uh, so it, it is a 2-4, what does that say, Flag Bearer? Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of tribe for Flag Bearer. <laughs> Three colorless, one white. It says if an opponent plays a spell or ability that could target a Flag Bearer in play, that player chooses at least one Flag Bearer as a target. So it's like pseudo spell skite-ish. It's like OG spell skite. <laughs> Not in a good way. But well, I mean it's fine. It's actually okay. Is it? But like, Hold on. I do think this is fine, yeah. I because it basically pulls any targeted removal to it. And so if like you have this alongside of a bomb or something like that, it's fine. Yeah. It does have a big butt, so it's going to block. But, like, a 2-4 for four, 4 is not usually where you want to be. Correct. But um, if it does eat a spell, especially yeah. in draft, I feel like it's worth it. Not more yeah. than the dagger. No. But. I get what you're saying. You yeah. know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bognar. What an interesting card. Uh, Bognar. A 2-2 two, two for 4 and a green. Already starting off great. Uh, whenever a player plays a black spell, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Well, I actually don't hate that. I feel um, like in Black Green Elves, this is fine, right? Agreed. Only in Limited, probably, but... Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this is not good anywhere else, but, like... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, fine. I, I feel like it's kind of filler-ish. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. Because, like, five mana, you want more than just yeah. a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, squeeze Revenge. <laughs> yes. My man. Uh, sorcery for one, a blue, and a red. Choose a number, flip a coin that many times, or until you lose a flip. Whichever comes first. If you win all the flips, draw two cards for each flip. That is such a weird card. <laughs> so, I mean... It's not uh, actually good, though, right? Not unlimited? I mean, not really. You're just kind of... I mean, you're literally, you're literally, literally gambling. gambling. Yeah. So, what would you choose? One, right? I guess. But then I mean, you're drawing, what, max two cards for three mana? And potentially that's just divination. no cards? Yeah. And that seems really bad. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like that card. Uh, go ahead, Will. <laughs> Dodecapod <laughs> is an artifact creature for four. It is a 3-3. Three, three. It says, if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Dodecapod from your hand, put it into play with two plus one plus one counters on it instead of putting it into your graveyard. I like that. I actually do like that. That's um, not bad. I... I mean, you're banking on a lot there. I don't know yeah. if I don't know if that's playing against something in the set or not, but... Yeah, I'm not sure either. And, like, generally speaking... Aside from like mind rot and like random mm -hmm. discard or something like that, I feel like 
normally players aren't this is like you're gonna see duress or anything like that or like uh yeah. thought sees and stuff where they like actually try and target stuff it's usually just random discard so like i i don't know i feel like it's fine it's filler yeah and if it happens to discard that's good all right i agree rare time that's not rare just <laughs> kidding uh dragon arch which is actually a pretty good card uh yeah that's uh, solid not necessary uh, actually yeah uh for five it's an artifact you can pay two tap it and put a multicolored creature card from your hand into play uh so yeah i love that card um, commander everywhere absolutely uh, <laughs> yeah what about in draft though in draft i would say probably not right like it's a little bit too much for something yeah. like that like you could just play the creature by that point exactly and remember you don't want you don't want a card that requires another card to be good that's fair right that's a good point yeah yeah but i think that is a solid card in it is a great in constructed card. yeah in constructed it's fantastic so we're still on yeah. the dagger now is our rare yes <laughs> what necrovolver it's a 2-2 yep. two, two for 2 and a black. It has kicker uh, for 1 and 1 green and or 1 white. Uh, if you paid the kicker with the green, uh, it comes into play with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it and has trample. Uh, if you paid the white kicker cost, uh, it comes into play with a plus 1 plus 1 counter and has whenever it deals damage, you gain that much life. Okay, so it could have... It could be a 5-5 five, five with trample and lifelink if you pay three six mana for it? seems actually pretty three different colors good. i'm kind of cool with that i mean it's between that and the dagger like 100 percent. but i feel like that's better i feel like i'd rather have that i think so too the dagger is sweet though i just want to point out but like that's a really good card it forces you to be like three color definitely but like this set also forces you to be three color for the most part anyway yeah so i, I do kind of like that i would want to try it i think that's pretty cool all right yeah that's our pick disagree with us in the comments we <laughs> encourage it um but yeah i really like that uh always cool. fun to open apocalypse yeah i like that was these neat sets. that was um, neat i got a spirit monger one time which was fun i love that card side note <laughs> guys uh thank you for watching this episode of the crack back series will thank you for being here it was a pleasure man always a good time fun stuff. uh please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below and as always please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content but with that we're going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next Crack and Pack episode. I'm going to take.